Hi, everyone. Today, I will be introducing to you some very central uh, and basic concepts of probability theory. Though these concepts are still at an informal level, and it's only next week, uh, actually next lecture, um, next week, where we will begin really introducing some of the formalism of probability theory. Uh, but today, the three concepts that we're going to learn are that of independence, bias, and fairness. And a very interesting way of introducing these ideas is by considering something that's called the gambler's fallacy. So let's do so. So I will begin by introducing the gambler's fallacy. And then I will discuss uh, and introduce the ideas of independence, randomness, and fairness. Then in the next part of this lecture, the next video, I, we will revisit the gambler's fallacy in light of what we've learned from these three concepts. So what is the gambler's fallacy? Suppose you are at a casino playing roulette. The roulette wheel is fair. So what does this mean? A roulette wheel is divided into 38 segments. So it's a big wheel that's divided into segments and there's 38, kind of like a big pizza with 38 slices. Um, and 18 of those slices uh, are red and 18 are black. And the, the remaining two are green. So how the game works is that if you bet on red and the wheel stops at red after it's spun, uh, you get double your money back. So you bet a certain amount of money and you can may choose red. And if you do so, and after the wheel is spun, if it lands on red, you get uh, double your money back from the house. But if you bet on black and the wheel stops on black, uh, you also get your money back. So if you bet on the right uh, color, but the thing is you can only bet on red or black. So if the wheel lands green, uh, whether you bet on red or black, uh, the house wins. Now suppose that the roulette wheel has landed on red the past 12 spins. So you've been playing for a while and you've been playing uh, for at least uh, 12 rounds. And for the previous 12 rounds, um, each time it's spun, it's landed on red. Now you think to yourself, the wheel has landed on red the past 12 times in a row. The process is fair. This is, that is to say, and we'll, we will return to the idea of fairness, but what this is, Studying for here is that this is a regular roulette wheel. There's nothing uh, funky, ha funky happening with it. It's a normal wheel that is being spun normally. There's no uh, secret contraptions or anything like that. So you think to yourself, this wheel has landed red the past 12 times. There's nothing weird happening with it. It's a normal wheel that's being spun normally. So that means we're due for a black uh, for it to land on black. So this is your reasoning. And so you conclude from this reasoning that you will bet on black. That is, uh, if you bet on black for the next round, you're more likely to win than if you bet on red. Now I want you to ask yourself, is this good reasoning? And the answer is that is not. So assuming that the wheel has been constructed normally, which we have, uh, so assuming that there's no tricks in it or how the operator is spinning it, uh, spinning the wheel is what we've called a fair process. What does it mean for a process to be fair? Well, you can think of a process as a series of possible events. So in this case, the process is basically playing roulette at the casino and what that consists of is a bunch of different spins. And each of these spins, there is a certain outcome or event of the roulette wheel landing on either red, uh, 
black or green on one of the segments. So what it means for a process uh, to, like this to be fair is that the outcome of each event, so in this case, the outcome of each spin is not influenced by the outcomes of the earlier spins. Second, it means that for each spin, all the possible outcomes of it are equally likely. So that is to say, when you're spinning this wheel over and over, each time you spin it, there's an equal chance of, of it, any of the segments being the one that is hit as it lands. And furthermore, whatever happens on one of uh, these spins has no effect on what will happen on the next spin. So this kind of is what we're getting at when we talk about how the wheel has been, is being, has been constructed normally and there's no tricks in it and there's no tricks in how the operator is spinning it. So hopefully now you can see that if it's true that this roulette wheel is fair, just because it's landed uh, red for 12 times in a row, that does not mean that the next time you spin it, there will be a very high, a higher chance that there's a black uh, than usual. That is because in the first case, the outcome of each event is not influenced by the outcomes of earlier events. So the earlier events here is that it's landed red on the past 12 times that it's been spun. Now that outcome for the past 12 times is very unlikely, but given that it has happened, this very unlikely thing has happened, that does not influence what will happen uh, in the future for the next spin, because each spin is uh, being done independently of the others. And secondly, all the possible outcomes for each spin are equally likely. So that is to say that on this spin, just like any other, on, so on this 13th spin, <laughs> just like any other, there's an equal chance of getting one of the 18 red, one of the 18 black, or uh, one of the two green. So that is to say, no matter what's happened before on this spin, there is an equal chance of getting red and black. So it does not make sense to think we are due for black, so I will bet on it. So I have just introduced what it means at an intuitive level to say that a process is fair, and that is to say that it is both one and two of these things here. So each, so the outcome of each event is not influenced by the outcomes of, of earlier ones. And second, for uh, all the possible outcomes of each event are equally likely. So again, in the case of the roulette wheel, what that means is that the outcome of one spin is not influenced by the outcomes of earlier ones. And also it means that for each spin, uh, whether it will land on one segment is equally likely as any other segment. So that is the notion of fairness. And in fact, one and two here actually correspond to the two other concepts that I want to introduce today, which are independence and uh, bias. In other words, uh, so in two, what we have is lack of bias or unbias or unbiasedness. And we can also uh, talk about randomness as that. So the spin is random. So in the remainder of this first part of this lecture, um, I will unpack independence uh, and bias and then return to fairness. Independence. Here's a definition. Events are independent just in case the outcome of one event does not affect the probabilities of other events' possible outcomes. So what does this mean? So in order to see what this means, I want you to imagine doing what's called sampling with replacement. So sampling involves taking an arbitrary instance or test from some uh, population or group and then noting the properties, the properties of that test. And we can very simply think, uh, understand sampling in terms of uh, removing random balls from some urn in front of us. Um, so the urn, you can't see what the contents are, but you know there's a bunch of marbles in the urn. So I want you to imagine an urn in front of you that has 
uh, in fact, 50 black marbles and 50 white ones. So if you, if you draw a ball at random from this urn, it's 50% likely to be white, and it's also 50% likely to be black because you're randomly drawing a marble from an urn with uh, 100 marbles in it, uh, 50 of which are black and 50 of which are white. So imagine that you draw a ball randomly from the urn, and it's again, it's, it's, gonna, it's one half chance that it's white and it's one half chance that it's black. Now imagine that you put that ball back and then you shake the urn up and then draw again. On the second draw, it's still there's still a 50% chance of drawing a white marble as well as a 50% chance of drawing a black one. That's because no matter what happened on the first draw, say on the first draw you drew a white one, uh, regardless, what you did before the second draw is you put that ball black back and you shook everything up and then drew randomly again. And in this case, hopefully you can see that even if you draw, even if you end up drawing a white ball 10 times in a row, which is very unlikely, but it's still possible. So imagine that you do in fact draw a white ball 10 times in a row. Nonetheless, if after each time, you're putting what you've drawn back and shaking everything up before you draw it randomly again. Uh, the next draw, the 11th draw, it's still going to be 50% chance that it's white. So after drawing a white ball 10 times in a row in this case, um, that does not mean that you're due for a black ball. Each draw, no matter what has happened previously, is still uh, independent. So that is to say that the events of consecutively drawing balls from the urn while putting the, uh, back the ball you drew each time and then shuffling things up or shaking the urn, these events are independent. And that is analogous to how, for instance, for a normal roulette wheel, each spin of the wheel is independent of any others. So for instance, if you spin the wheel and it lands in a certain segment, you don't, you know, somehow remove that segment. And similarly with an urn, in the case where you draw from it, and then after each draw, you put the results of that draw back. Um, each time you draw will be independent of all the others. That is to say that to just, just to drive this point home, whatever happened on previous draws, the probabilities in the next draw are unaffected. The odds of drawing a white or a black marble will always be 50-50. Now, this is in contrast to what we can call sampling without replacement. So imagine instead now with the same urn, so the same urn where there's 50 black balls and 50, 50 white balls, imagine that each time you draw a ball, you set aside that, that ball you've drawn, and then draw again. So, yeah, so each time you make a sample, i.e. you pick randomly from the urn, you note the color of the thing you've drawn, and then you put it aside. You do not, you do not throw it back in the urn. Now, in this case, if you draw 10 white balls in a row, the 11th draw actually is more likely to be black than white. Because if you've taken 10 white balls out of the urn and not put them back, in such a case, for the 11th draw after that, there's only 40 white marbles left, but also 50 black ones. So now on the 11th draw, there is a uh, only a 40 out of 90 chance of drawing a white ball because there are 90 uh, balls or marbles, sorry, um, I'll use um, balls and marbles interchangeably. Um, for the 11th draw, there's 90 uh, balls in total in the urn. 40 of them are white, so that means there is a 40 out of 90 chance of drawing a white one, but 50 of them are black, so there's a 50 over 90 chance of drawing a black one, so there's higher chance 
of drawing a black ball on the 11th draw, in this case where you're sampling, without replacement. And in general, the more white marbles you draw, the more you do become due for a black one. So the events of sampling without replacement are not independent. What happens on previous draws does affect the probabilities of subsequent draws. So the reason for that is that when you draw a white ball, you do not, you do not put it back in the urn. So that means that um, the more white balls you draw, it does affect the probability of drawing a white ball uh, versus a black one on uh, further draws. Now, before moving on to randomness or unbiasedness, I want to note that moving forward, we won't be talking directly about events having probabilities and therefore events being independent. Instead, we're going to be talking about propositions having probabilities. So we'll see this in much more detail next week. But we can talk about two of events being independent, just in case um, the truth of one does not influence the truth of the other. That is to say that two propositions are independent just when the uh, one's truth does not make the other's truth uh, more likely and vice versa. So you can think of basically events like propositions and here where we talk about the outcome of one event not affecting the probabilities of the other events outcomes. Similarly, instead of the outcome of event, we think of the truth value or the truth of a proposition. And so propositions are independent um, just when uh, the truth of one doesn't affect the probability of the other. Now, in a statistics, statistics class, sorry, in a statistics class, you will hear a lot of talk, of talk about events and their probabilities. But in this class, we will not be uh, talking about events moving forward. We'll be talking about propositions and their probabilities. But again, we will see that in much more detail starting next week. So now, in, in addition to independence, there's also this thing called randomness. So a process is random or not biased or unbiased, just in case all the possible outcomes of that uh, process are equally likely. So that is to say that a process is biased just in case some of the possible outcomes are more likely than others. So I want to make one note before I look at some examples of this uh, of uh, randomness, which is that here I do not mean biased in maybe the ordinary sense in which it kind of has a moral or political sense. If you think about someone being biased or prejudiced, so that is not the way I mean it here. In this uh, course, it's a technical term. And it has nothing to do with what's right or wrong. So clearly it's uh, morally wrong for someone to be biased or prejudiced. Uh, but the notion of bias uh, here has, has nothing to do with uh, uh, what's right and wrong. It's a, it's a technical term, which means that, uh, which applies to a process or event and applies just in case some of the possible outcomes are more likely than others. That is to say that the outcome of the event is biased towards certain ways of its unfolding. So here are a couple examples involving coins. So imagine a coin that's been perfectly made and is not thrown in any kind of tricky way. So upon its uh, tossing it, the chance of either heads or tails coming up is 50%. That is to say that this coin is random between landing heads or landing tails. Or another way of putting that is that this coin is not biased or it's unbiased. It does not have a bias towards either heads or tails. Now in contrast, imagine a loaded coin that has been weighted to come up heads three quarters of the time. 
this coin is not random. Rather, this coin is biased. It is biased towards heads. So here we see the difference between a random process, i.e. flipping uh, a perfectly made coin in a normal way versus flipping a loaded coin. So in the next video, I will consolidate these uh, notions of independence and uh, lack of bias into fairness. And then we will return to the gambler's fallacy that we began with 